Ганза. Научная группа военной сапора Москва за 70 дней побывала более чем в 20 странах мира. Исторические дети в программе по следам предков. What city in France was called the temporary capital of the Turkestan autonomy? Why did Mustafa Shoke spend 20 years in Paris, not in other European cities? Why the outstanding son of the Kazakh people was appreciated by the French? In this film, we will continue the story about the work of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition in France. We have already spoken about Attila, about what valuable exhibits and manuscripts concerning this outstanding ruler of the Huns are kept in the Louvre. This program will be devoted to two topics, the Mamluks in the army of the famous French commander Napoleon Bonaparte and Kazakhs in the War of 1812, and Mustafa Shokan, a fiery fighter for freedom and democracy. Many Kazakh people witnessed the construction of the Arc de Triomphe on the Charles de Gaulle Square in Paris. The historical monument was erected by order of Napoleon as a symbol of the glorious victories of his powerful army. However, Napoleon would also suffer defeats. In June 1812, Napoleon invaded the Russian Empire and the Franco-Russian War began. Together with the Russians, the peoples that were part of Russia took part in the battle. Kazakhs were especially numerous. Warriors of the Great Steppe showed courage in the Battle of Borotino. They were at the forefront and fully justified the expectations placed on them. The equestrian Kazakh regiment with the banner of victory was the first to enter Paris. By the order of the Russian Emperor Alexander I, Kazakh warriors led by Amen by Batirov and Oren by Jean Zhegidov solemnly took part in the ceremony as the winners near the Arc de Triomphe on March the 14th, 1814. There are official documents confirming this fact kept in the central museum of our country. For example, a native of Akmola, Mohammed Abdirahmanov, was awarded the medal for the capture of Paris. The glorious heroic path of ancestors on French land began as early as the 5th century in the days of Attila and continued until the 19th century. The French had not faced such a serious opponent with a large army before. At first, they thought that they would fight wild Mongolian tribes. In fact, they were Kazakhs. The United Regiment included Nogais, Bashkirs, and the peoples of the Caucasus, but most of all, there were Kazakhs. In 1812, during the Franco-Russian War, the Kipchaks fought not only on the side of the Russians, they were also part of the French army. Prior to the invasion of Russia, the army of Bonaparte made a campaign into Egypt in 1798-1801. It was then that Napoleon noticed the courage of the Mamluks, a military caste formed from the Kipchaks. After that, a special unit was formed in the French army, directly subordinate to the emperor and responsible for his safety. The Kipchaks were entrusted for their loyalty and devotion to their ruler. The artist Jean-Baptiste Debret depicted the fact that the Mamluks were indeed Napoleon's personal bodyguards. This picture depicts a Kipchak warrior to the right of the emperor. A division from the Kipchaks or the personal Mamluk guard of Napoleon also participated in the War of 1812. They reached Moscow. This is confirmed by excavations. In 1945, during excavations near the village of Borodino, the remains of two people were found in the forms of French officers. One of them wore a ring with a generic Kipchak seal. Exhibits stored in the Paris Louvre confirm courage of Mamluk in the French army. Participants of the scientific expedition got acquainted with them. According to scientists, these important historical sources require more detailed research.
Москва-нын түбінде Бородино селосындағы кәбірден шыған As a result of the excavations, it was established that the dress of the found remains was different from the others. It was special. The shoulder straps were of Napoleon's army, but the shape resembled Mamluk's ones. The monument of Mustafa Shoka in France is another historical site visited by the expedition's participants. It is not difficult to find it. Mustafa Shoka is the name of the entire area in the French capital where the monument is located. This is a sign of special respect for the Kazakh fighter for freedom and democracy. Hazır, uh... Now Kazakhs especially come to worship the monument of Mustafa Shokai. I think the number of such people will grow. One can easily find a park named after Mustafa Shokai. Local residents know it. Modern technologies can also help to find the site. Mustafa Shokai is respected not only by Kazakhs, but also by the entire Turkic world and even by the French. The Germans consider him an outstanding public figure. Now representatives of different nationalities are among members of the Kazakh-French society. One of them is Turkish Balaban Samidin. He studies the activities of Mustafa Shokai in Europe. Mustafa Shokai Turkey is a ulu adam. Mustafa Shokai is an outstanding son of the entire Turkic world. He fought for the independence of all Turks. We are proud to have a relationship with this great man. There are almost all representatives of the Turkic peoples in our society of friendship. Mustafa Shokai dreamed of a freedom and independence for all Turkic peoples, but in no case by bloodshed. Therefore, far from his homeland, he was looking for ways to fight the Soviet regime, the methods of which directly contradicted the views of Shokai. Mustafa chose Paris for the most optimal place for such struggle. At that time, the European country strongly adhered to the principle of freedom, equality and brotherhood. Of course, Mustafa Shokai could stay in one of the fraternal countries, but it was important for him to be among people who appreciated peace and freedom. At first, he was in Turkey, but he stayed there for no more than three months. Then, the national liberation struggle led by Mustafa Ataturk began. In the summer of 1921, Mustafa Shokai moved to Paris and began his activity. His main weapon was a pen. The main goal, the independence and freedom of the homeland. In his editions, Jana Turkistan, Jazz Turkistan, he raised the most pressing topics concerning the fate of the people. With his sharp words, he influenced the situation in problem solving. Mustafa Shokai lectured on the policies of the Bolsheviks in English and French. France became the second homeland for the outstanding public figure. <laughs> All our compatriots living in Paris and the representatives of other Turkic peoples have one dream. This is the opening of the Museum of Mustafa Shokai. This idea arose a long time ago. Mustafa Shokai, together with his wife, Maria, lived in Paris for about 20 years. Mustafa Shokai Museum in Paris should be logical. After all, he is one of those who stood at the roots of the ideological dispute on the path to freedom. Head of scientific expedition, Sapar Iskakov appealed to the people of Kazakhstan with a request. Standing near the monument to our great ancestor, I want to urge all Kazakh youth, entrepreneurs, to contribute to this noble goal. We created a special fund in Astana which bears the name of Sagadat Nurmagambeta. You can always contact us. Fifteen kilometers away from Paris, there is a small town of Nogent sur Marne. Mustafa Shokai lived in Paris from 1921 to 1923. 
Then he moved to Nogent sur Marne and stayed there until 1941. There were two reasons for the change of residence. First of all, life in Paris was very expensive. Secondly, many politicians, public figures, and other representatives of the intelligentsia lived in Nogent sur Marne, and this is exactly the environment that was necessary for political struggle. Nogent sur Marne Kalasnan. We are in the park in Nogent sur Marne. Mustafa Shokai often walked around the park with his wife Maria. Mayor of the city, Jacques Martin, supported the initiative to open alleys in a sign of respect to the prominent Kazakh public figure. The head of the town also welcomed the participants of the scientific expedition with great hospitality. In turn, Kazakh scientists, according to custom, put chapon on the shoulders of the mayor. Mustafa Shokai is a man, of course, from Kazakhstan. Mustafa Shokai is a great figure for the French people who fought for democracy and freedom. Most important years of his life were spent in this city. France is considered his second home. Thanks to the monument established here, many French people get acquainted and know the outstanding son of the Kazakh people. We're always ready to support the beginnings of Kazakhstan and are ready to work together in the field of history, literature and culture. Having studied the documents of Nogen sur Marne archives, our compatriots found out that Mustafa Shokai lived at three addresses in France. From 1923 to 1930, he resided on Rue Baudin de Paris Street. From 1930 to 1933, along B Avenue, Parmentier. In the last eight years, he lived in a house along the Square de la Fontaine Street. French public figures call these addresses the three temporary capitals of the Turkestan autonomy because Mustafa Shokai voiced in these houses all his thoughts and ideas about independence and freedom. One of the local museums houses a photograph of Mustafa Shokai. Amazing and faithful companion of Mustafa Shokai's life, Maria Garina Shokai rests here. She died in 1969 in town of Nogent sur Marne. The expedition members arrived at the grave of Mustafa Shokai's wife to read the prayer. Mustafa Shokai, Baba Mizdin, Ake Mizdin, Brugara Mizdin, Women of Jodas Wolgan, Sox and Tagdan, Brigue Buiskin, Women of Ayanashin. Mustafa Shokai is our common ancestor. For someone, he's like a father. For someone, he's like a brother. Maria was his faithful friend and assistant. She shared all the difficulties with him and was close to the end of life. Maria Gorena Shokai was buried by fate in France, in the outskirts of Paris. Mustafa Shokai, Mustafa Shokai and Marina Gorna met in the student years, or rather in 1960. Two years later, in 1918, they created a family. The young couple loved each other very much. However, Mustafa Shokai had one condition, Maria should accept the Muslim faith. She wrote about this in her memoirs in 1963. Mustafa and I decided to get married, but we had different religions. I'm a Christian. Mustafa is a Muslim. He insisted that I accept Islam. One day, we got into a carriage and went to the old city. The Imam held Nikah, a Muslim ceremony of marriage, with two Uzbeks witnessing on April the 18th, 1918. In her memoirs, Maria also wrote, how she went to the husband's village, wearing a kerchief and respecting all Muslim rules. On the way, Mustafa explained to me that we would stop in the village of the Imam, and I definitely need to put on a kerchief, a camisole, so that my hands and feet were closed at the same time. We perceive Maria as a Muslim woman, although she was a Christian. She was with Mustafa all her life. She was his other half. Mustafa 
Maria Gornashoka wrote about life, work, struggle, heroic deeds of her husband. However, she never mentioned the reasons for his death. It is known that Mustafa Shokai died on December the 27th in 1941 in the Berlin Hospital after mysterious circumstances, and this is quite understandable. After all, during the Second World War, the freedom fighter openly opposed Nazism and was the only one who directly announced this to the leaders of the fascist regime. Of course, it would be good to open the Mustafa Shokai Museum in France. We raised this topic last year, but there were a lot of problems in this issue. For example, an apartment or office cannot be re-equipped into a museum, and yet I think the museum still needs to be open. Members of the scientific expedition completed their trip to Europe in 2017 in Paris and returned to their homeland. In the course of their research, scientists were convinced that our ancestors left a large number of historical evidences of their lives throughout the Eurasian space. Many of them, as it turned out, were still unknown to a wide range of people. The Trails of Nomads expedition was intended to broaden the image of the past of the Kazakhs. It was launched in May 2017 in a style. The first stop of the expedition was Arkalik, where scientists collected a lot of useful information. Then they went to Kostanai, Aktabe, Uralsk, Atarao, and other regions of Kazakhstan. Interesting archival documents were found in the Orenburg and Astrakhan regions of Russia. In Azerbaijan and Armenia, the expedition members found evidence of the life of the ancient Kipchaks who moved here. Georgia remembers our ancestors too. The soldiers of Deshta Kipchak in the Middle Ages helped repel the raids of the Persian conquerors. Head of the expedition Safari Skakov collected a lot of valuable data over two and a half months. In September, he presented the analysis at an international conference. We could establish tombstones on all the graves of our ancestors discovered by us. This would be correct. Then the descendants will visit these places, remember their ancestors in their heroic path. Many people spoke the Kipchak language at least over five countries. Among them there were Kumiks, Balkars, Karaitis, Karachais, Nogais. Their language, facial features are close to Kazakh. Can this be said about the kinship of cultures between our peoples? To answer this question, scientists collected samples of DNA throughout the expedition. The average Kazakh genetic portrait can be described as follows. Let it be Naiman, Adai, Argin, or Dulat. For everyone, there is a common sign. Speaking in more detail, Kazakhs are 50 to 55 percent close to the people of East Asia, 20 to 25 percent to Europe, 10 to 15 percent to South Asia and the Middle East. That is, Kazakhs have a certain genetic connection with all the peoples of Eurasia and a vast stretch from Japan to the UK. Because we were on the road of the great migration of nations, the peoples from the east passed through our territory to the west and left their genetic trace in our history. Participants of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition covered more than 20,000 kilometers in 70 days. Kazakh scientists visited Germany, Italy, France, Poland, Hungary, Ukraine, Georgia, almost 20 countries of Europe. In 2018, the expedition will be continued. Its participants will go to Japan, South Korea, China, India, and a number of other countries. These are lands where our ancestors left their precious heritage, which will help to know the true past.